thank you very much for coming tonight, everybody. My name is Amy Conley. I've been teaching uh, the ukulele instrument for about six years in Milford, New Hampshire. Um, I teach classes up there, so I'm not here to sell you anything. Um, I am a dealer for these beautiful um, magic fluke ukes, which I love to talk about, but I'm not here to sell you those either. Um, <laughs> I'm just here to teach you uh, to really get you started. So we have an hour and a half, that's lots of time. Um, so we'll try to have some fun, we'll sing some songs. Um, I have wonderful handouts for you that will really, I hope, um, give you a good foundation to go home and keep learning. Um, and I'm, what I'm gonna do right now is, uh, my name is Amy Conley. Uh, I grew up in Needham, Mass. Uh, but now I live in New Hampshire. I play a lot of instruments besides the ukulele, but um, after trying to teach guitar for a few years and perform, I do a lot of performing and lots of musical things, but um, I found that teaching the ukulele was so much fun for me as a teacher because um, people have success with it and they keep it up and they enjoy it and uh, I can't tell you how many guitar people I've taught and they've quit after six months or a year because it's a guitar it's kind of hard there's six strings and you have to find a way to you know use those six strings with only your four fingers and a thumb so um, the wonderful thing about the uke is it has four strings you have four fingers um, if you're lucky and, uh, <laughs> and if you don't have four fingers you can usually you know finagle a way to play um, I actually have a, a student of mine um, that she's now playing lefty because her right fingers are better than her left fingers. So she strums with her left fingers, but uses her right fingers for this. Um, so anyway, what I'm, the way I'm going to run this uh, workshop is I'm gonna just tell you about the handouts. I'm not going to give them to you until probably the end of the class, because you know how it is with handouts. Everyone wants to read them, and yeah. they all, you know, I'm trying to talk, and you're trying to read, and it's, it's not a good way to teach. So I will give you these handouts uh, when you leave tonight. Um, the first page is just kind of like some little resources that I've found helpful. One is a tuner app. Uh, I don't know if it's an app or, I mean, I found it like five years ago, so there's probably better things out there now. You can uh, get apps on your smartphone to tune your ukulele with. Um, this is just a website where you can like click and it will play the note for you, and then you click. Um, it also has uh, my social media uh, ukulele page. I have a Facebook page for ukulele. Uh, a fun website where you can find lots of music with chords. Um, a fun teacher on YouTube, Cynthia Lynn is her name, she lives in San Francisco, and she has all these great videos, just like very, very, very nice way of teaching. Um, there's tons of stuff on, on YouTube for ukulele, but it's not always easy, you know, to follow. So um, you can go to her page and learn lots of cool songs. And there's a little description of, of how to strum at the bottom, and I'm going to teach you these strums, but if you forget, you can maybe read the description and it might be helpful. I don't know. It's hard to describe strumming with words, so hopefully we'll learn. Um, then I have some really important chords for you. Uh, these chords, I'm going to go over these with you. Um, these are the most, pop most common chords in the key of C. And I really suggest that you learn one set of chords first before trying to learn 10 or 15 chords. Um, there, it's hard to memorize the names of these chords, so just learning a few at a time, like one or two a week, will help you remember the names of them as you go on and learn more. They have letter names like A and B and C, so it's kind of a, you know, not an easy thing to memorize. Um, then we have some songs on here. I have a how to read chord grids, and I'm going to show you that on here. Uh, so I'll teach you how to do that. Uh, you are my sunshine, with some chord grids over the words. Uh, then we have Bob Dylan's song, You Ain't Going Nowhere, and uh, Simon Garfunkel's El Condor Paso. We do that tonight. That's a really easy song to play for beginners. Uh, a 50s rock song, and a little ending song that we'll do. And the last page is just, um, just for those of you who really care about this stuff. Uh, for those of you who really care about wanting to read music on the ukulele. Not everyone needs to do that. Not everyone wants to do that. Some people just want to learn the chords, sing the songs, have fun with their friends. Okay, but some people really want to learn how to read music. So it's really up to you. 
You don't need to use the last page. Um, and this one has all the notes on your fretboard. Uh, so that's another optional thing that you might want to be, you might be interested in that, you might not be interested in that. So I'm not really going to cover that tonight, just, oh, you know, maybe, <coughs> maybe that much. But mostly we're going to sing and play and have fun. So um, I just wanted to start off also with showing you the different, different types of ukuleles. Um, there are four different sizes. 21 inches generally is the soprano. And uh, can you guys hold up these? Those are sopranos right there. Uh, about 23 inches is the concert uke. Anybody know if they have a concert uke? Yep, hold those up. It's a little bit bigger, gives you a little bit more room for your fingers. Uh, the threads are a little bit wider, so if you have large fingers and large, or large hands, I suggest that you try for a larger uke like the, the concert size. Uh, the next size up is the tenor, and um, that's another two inches longer, and it's just even a little bigger. Who's got a con Let's hold it up next to a concert. Is that a concert? I, I think that is, because that looks kind of tall. Yeah, so, so here's the concert, and here's the tenor. Um, and it doesn't really matter so much the body shape. There's lots of different body shapes. There's round and square and, you know, everything in between. Um, but the length is really what constitutes... Um, and another the thing I like about the, the tenor is that I play guitar, so I'm kind of used to something a little bit bigger already. Um, and I like the sound of, um, because you kind of round, you know, like a, a bassy sound. And then I put a low G string on it. So instead of singing, my dog has fleas, my strings sing, my dog has fleas. So I got a low da da da, instead of da 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 da. Like that. That's what most of you are tuned to right now. Um, the nice thing about a low G is you can play Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yes? I have a low G too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Low G too. Um, so, anyway, it's just, a, it's just an optional thing you can do. There's a site called JustStrings.com and they sell these for $2. You can get a low G string and just put it on your if you like that sound. Gives you a little, you know, blue skies on a happy day, nothing but blue skies. So uh, I could do that, da, 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 which I don't really get with the high G. But um, ukulele enthusiasts will tell you that the high G just gives you some really cool picking patterns that you can do. Um, and it's just kind of a whole new feel, a whole new sound. So there's uh, benefits to having both, I believe. So those are the three um, sizes of ukulele that are usually tuned G, C, E, A. This is called a baritone ukulele, and it's tuned like a guitar. So these four strings are like the four highest strings of a guitar. You know, they're much lower. So um, it's a real nice option for people who already play the guitar because now all the chords are pretty much the same as on the guitar, same, same finger positions. It's also a nice um, first guitar for children because they get to learn you know, the notes and the strings on these four and then, then they can get a bigger guitar that has the lower strings and they just have to you know, learn a few more positions and a few more notes. So baritone, I, I believe I read that uh, Pete Seeger's first instrument was the baritone unit. <laughs> oh, I have one more to show you. This is one of my one of my favorites. Um, this is the banjo ukulele, and this one is made um, by the Magic Fluke Company in Western Mass, Sheffield, Mass. Um, it's a tiny little factory, and uh, it's a beautiful post and beam building. You can go in there and see them making making stuff in there. Um, but it has a really nice, happy little sound, and I like to use it with the kazoo. Special <laughs> physical. I can actually stop playing it and it won't fall on the floor. Thank you. 
Yeah, the banjo unit has a totally different, unique sound. It also sounds really pretty if you, uh, you know, finger picking it too. Um, and the other cool thing I, I like to do with this one is I like to tune it down a little bit lower. I forget how I do that, but um, I think I tune everything like down like a whole step or something.
that's the shuffle strum. Let's try it slightly bit faster so you can hear what it sounds like when it's fast, okay? This drum is especially useful for a lot of songs that have that rhythm. So when you're playing something like uh, Beach Boys, you know, that's a and it's going to stay that way for the whole song, okay? Another song uh, calls for a different kind of strum, calls for the even strum, something like this. skipping some of them. But the point here is to keep your hand moving no matter what you do. Okay? So the hand always moves. Sometimes it plays, sometimes it doesn't. Try that. Just try that. Work your hand in and out a little bit.
It's kind of standing. See how it's standing up straight? Sort of. See what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay. So the tip of your finger is straight down on the on the string. I'm gonna come around. Chart, uh, they don't usually tell you the strings anymore because they assume 
You know the names of your strings? So let's say the names of our strings just to practice. G, C, E, A. Goats can eat apples. Goats can eat apples. Goats can eat apples. Or you can make up your own little sentence, right? Good children eat apples. Good children eat apples. Is there such a thing as a good child and a bad child? <laughs> I think all, all children are good, but I guess but all children don't eat apples. Just bad apples. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's lots of lots of sentences you can pick. Um, so this is your C chord. I'm gonna put down another chord here, and I'm gonna see if you can um, find it. Okay? I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I'm just gonna draw it on there. And see if you can put it down on your on your you <laughs> see if you can play this chord with your second finger. <laughs>
you keep C. You know, C, F, and A minor. There's one more chord that's very, very important in that key, and it's sort of the hump. So if I teach this 10-week beginner class and we do all key of C, the G7 chord is the little hump that it takes like about two weeks to learn, okay? <laughs> but then after that, it's all easy again, okay? So the G7 chord looks like this. I bet some of the kids who take you play, they know how to play. Do you know how to play G7? Alana, you want to show everybody? Want to stand up and show us? I'm an eraser. Yes, beautiful. Here, turn around, show everybody. So it's three fingers, everybody. Hmm, are there any tricks we can teach them? Ah, good. So take your C, play your C chord, and tell them to that again about the third finger. What do we do with our third finger? Move it up one fret. Move it up to the third fret. And then put your second, your first finger on the first fret, second string. And then the, so basically it's an F with a C that's split up. <laughs> uh, well, it's not quite an F though, because we have to move our second finger, right? Yeah. But you're correct in saying that, that first finger for, here, let's, let's go from our F. That is easier. Play an F chord, the one with the two fingers. F. Remember the two finger one? It's like an A minor with the first finger. Now, see that first finger? See where that first finger is? That first finger is going to stay there. The third finger, I mean the second finger, I'm sorry, is going to jump down to the next string below. Can you just walk around so they can see you? Here, put this here. Walk around so they can see that. I'm going to draw it on here. And okay, so that finger stays the same. The first finger stays the same. Second finger moves, moves down one string, and then the third finger slides over from the C chord. So you have one, two, three.
It's a G7. Alright, now, um, it's, it's, it, it's not that hard to learn about chords. Like, why is it a 7? Why is it a minor? It's not that hard to learn that stuff. I'm not going to teach it to you tonight. Um, but just how many people, like, play another instrument? Raise your hand if you play another instrument. Yeah, and, and keep your hand up if you play a chord instrument, like you can play chords on your instrument. Because a trumpet can't play chords, right? Just one note at a time. So if you play chord instruments, okay. So if you play chord instruments, you know something about chords, right? Can you describe what a, main, what a minor chord is to us? Or tell us anything about it? There's no right answer. Just tell me what you think about a minor chord. It's like supposed to sound like sadder. Yeah. So give that A minor. It sounds a little sad. Here's an A major. It sounds happier. Here's a minor. <laughs> now minor chords don't have to be sad. You can go da 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 for example, a major chord goes like this, do, mi, sol, but a minor chord goes do, mi, flat, sol, so that mi is just a little bit lower, it's one fret lower. That's why we play an A major this way, and then we take this one down one fret, and it's, now it's an A minor chord. Alright, don't retune your uke too much, sir. <laughs> Because it's my uke, I don't want the strings to break. Um, so that's major minor chord. And then the seventh chord is another example. It's a, a major chord is do, mi, sol. But the seventh chord is adds an extra note, which is nice because you have four strings, right? So instead of having two C's, an E, and a G to make your C chord, you have a low C, C, do, mi, sol. In the seventh chord, you might have do mi sol seven. So instead of bum 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 bum, it's bum 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 bum. A little bit different. So chords are just little, you know, little differences between the chords. Um, if you learn your major chords and your minor chords and your seventh chords, you can play all kinds of folk songs and rock songs and pop songs. Okay? If you learn some other kinds of chords, like your diminished chord, you can play jazz songs. Okay? So if you're really into pop and rock and folk, um, then and you don't really care so much about the jazz genre or the old jazz standards, you can play lots and lots of songs with just knowing three or four chords. Okay? If you want to play jazz standards, then you end up adding a lot more chords. You might have ten chords in your song. But if you're just playing a pop song or a folk song or a rock song, you probably have like three, four, five chords in your song. Okay? So that's another um, great thing about playing a chord instrument. Your voice is your melody, and your instrument is your rhythm. So now we have the C chord we know today. We might not do it for the next 20 more hours, but you know it now, the C chord, right? Um, Let's just try a C7 chord. It's your first finger. First finger, first fret, first string. We call this the easy chord. First string, first finger, first fret. Um, 
Let's take the F chord. That's the one with the two fingers. Um, finger up here, finger down here.
How about oh, down in the valley? Um, down in the valley is on the handout. It's on the second page in the key of F with F and a C7. On the back, you have the same song with C and G7. Okay? So, uh, same song, one will be a little higher in your voice than the other one. Let's try it with F. Let's do, um, let's just do, we'll just do the even strum. It's in three, four time. That means there's going to be three beats to a measure. It's kind of like a waltz. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were. 
I want you to play your F chord. I'll write it down for you. First finger, second finger. Okay, that's your F chord, right? That's your finger chord. So we're going to play D minor by adding your third finger right up here. Just play two strokes 
and then take the next two beats to get to your D minor. Okay? So like this, you can go one, two, three, four. One, two.
one. <laughs> In case you don't know the song, I'm just going to play a little bit of it, and then we'll end on um, Sing Your Way Home. That's a really pretty old camp song that you might like. So, the Do On Run is a 50 song. Uh, four beats each. So, the pattern is C, F, G7, C. And it stays the same through the whole song. Try that. C, F, G7, C. I think it's the same.
say something because it's almost time for us to go. Um, I do need to like pack up the use that you borrowed from me. And um, I hope you go home and you can keep playing. The library now has a ukulele that you can take out, right? Don't all rush at once. <laughs> There's only one. Um, <laughs> but um, that's a nice feature. And I really want to thank the uh, Flint's Memorial Library for having this workshop. Um, I'm not a volunteer, so it was, you know, an expense for them to do this. So please uh, please thank them. And uh, thanks for bringing your nukes and for playing along and coming and joining us. Thank you. And uh, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.